Hi, this is Bruce White at Sterling Systems. We're going to do a quick video of how to use Field 360 to aid in your field work. The first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and launch Field 360. It's going to ask whether to connect to the scanner or not. That's an RTC and I'm using VLK, so I'm going to say no. Go up to the top, change the name of the project that you want. We're going to use Field 360 Training. 360 demo I guess and then we can hit the big picture thing and select camera and just take a essentially a thumbnail to associate with our project now we hit save and that project is now created I've exited out of field 360 going back in and now it's asking to connect to the BLK scanner I say yes and then I'll go into the project now here we've got a number of different things. We've got um, a couple of tabs at the top, map, 360, and 3D. We'll go over that. There's some menus on the side that we'll go over, but the important three things are at the bottom. And I just hit the most left button, which starts a scan. This will bring up the main scanning menu that has three different options, the photograph, the actual starting of the scan, and then the level of detail of the scan. If we select where it says LDR, that'll get us into the photograph uh, menu. We can either turn photographs off, low uh, density photos, or high dynamic range photos. Your choice. HDR will take quite a bit more space. For the speed of demonstration here, we'll leave the LDR on and then exit out of the menu. Now we're going to use the third icon, which is the point density. There will be four different settings here. Let's say ultra low at 50 by millimeters by 50 millimeters at 10 meters. Low, which is 25 by 25. Um, the next is 12 millimeters by 12 millimeters. And the highest is 6 millimeters by 6 millimeters at 10 meters. For our purposes today, we're going to use the lowest setting for speed, and up at the top you can also see that the time that it's estimating that the scan is going to take. All of our settings are good now, so we're just going to hit the big play button and allow the scan to start. The scan is now complete. You can see a portion of the points on the screen, and that just represents a small portion of the actual data that's collected. And we can take a look at, up at the top under different uh, options there. If we select the setup and then go up to 360, we can rotate around and, and look at the point cloud. We also have different settings that we can use. Um, black and white, color, high intensity. If we select the 3D tab, then we can actually see the point cloud in full 3D, whether it's a single setup or an entire bundle. We'll go back to the map tab, walk over to the scanner and pick it up and the Viz system will become active which means that it's tracking its location. So you'll see um, a little dot moving on the screen representing where the scanner is walking to the next position. As it walks off the screen, we could zoom out a little bit to see it, but otherwise we're just going to set it down. We're going to change the density to a little bit higher and just hit play. That extra density is only going to take, I think, four seconds.
The second setup is done. So let's zoom out a little bit so we can see it. And what we're going to do is we're going to link the data together to, con to create a constraint. What you're going to do here is select one and then start the align command, select the other, and then either hit start alignment or the middle red button. And that'll put the two scans together where we can adjust them and make sure that they fit properly. When we get to this view, we can see that the blue and the orange aren't really aligned very well. It looks like the scanner location is about right, but there's a little bit of rotation. So we'll use that big circle and just drag on that circle a little bit to rotate the blue to match the orange. We might have to move it down a little bit. And once we get it what appears to be lined up, then we'll hit optimize and then create link. As soon as it finishes that alignment, it goes back to the main scanning area, and you can see that we have two point clouds, two setups, and a constraint in between them. We're going to pick up the scanner again and move it to the third location so you can see it tracking. As soon as I set it down, it will be pretty much in the right place. And then we'll start the other scan will leave the resolution the same so all we have to do is press the play button and it will complete the third scan. The third scan is complete, but before we go and link it, why don't we take a look at the side menu right now. If we go to the top option, we can see the different bundles that we have in the project. If, um, if we go to the second one, we can see the different setups in that bundle. If we back up one, you can see unlinked setups and bundles. So we want to make sure that the unlinked gets moved in and that of course is the third scan and we'll do that now and then the final one down at the bottom is different settings for you. We can use the slider bar on the right hand side lower and to move it up increasing the point density or it also works with HDR photos in adjusting the um, contrast. It's time to link that third setup. So we're going to go ahead the same way we did it before. Select one, select start alignment, select the other, adjust the uh, point cloud if need be, and then hit optimize and create link again. Also notice that in the upper left hand corner you can move to a side view if you wanted. All the setups are completely uh, constrained so we're done with our job so we'll leave the job and we're done thanks for listening